Why do organizations make you use Windows instead of Linux as an ethical hacker? Welcome back to another video, everyone. Today, we're going to be talking about why organizations ask you to use a Windows operating system instead of a Linux distribution while you're working as a cybersecurity professional. Before we get started, if you would like to join the best community in the world for cybersecurity enthusiasts who want hands-on experience and learning tutorials, as well as guidance from industry professionals, head to safeinternetproject.com and become a member today. This topic comes up more often than I'm willing to admit. It's like almost every single day someone asks me, why do you use Windows? Why are you using Windows? What's Windows for? Well, blah, 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 blah. Why don't you use Kali at work? Why don't you use Debian or some other shit? There's a very short answer to this question. And I get it. Trust me, I get it. I'd love to use Linux where I work all the time as my working daily driver. However, for most jobs out there, it's just not viable. Now, don't get me wrong. I do use Linux fairly often, like every single day. But it's usually a VM that's been created for me that's within a controlled environment. Let me explain. You go to work at an enterprise level organization or within a government agency. Their main technology stack is Office 365, Intune, Microsoft 365, and Windows workstations. You then put into the mix a Linux distribution that has trouble accessing those file shares, the different stuff on OneDrive, and I know you can get it through the browser, but it's different, and everything else that Windows comes with as an enterprise controlled environment. Something that a sysadmin can control what you access and what you don't access. That is exactly why organizations on this level ask you to use Windows operating systems. The main reason here is for compliance. If that organization wants to stay compliant and within the boundaries that it is set by the owning organization or a compliance framework that they have to stay within and all of their systems are in Windows, then naturally they're going to make you use Windows. These organizations, they want you to log into an active directory with your username and password so that you can access the files that you need and only the files that you need. They have control over things like email signatures, what emails you get on your computer, file shares, who you can talk to and how you talk to them. They have control over the technology stack that you use. Now, usually in these organizations, like I said at the start, they have virtual machines for you to access to do different parts of the jobs that maybe you can't do on Windows. However, with WSL2, usually this risk is completely mitigated and you can just use WSL2, which is of course within Windows. Now this is actually a benefit for you because you get to use a system that's fully controlled. It's all nicely tied up in a ribbon and it's presented to you as a system that you go in and you do your work on. They don't want you fixing drivers. They don't want you to be messing about with the different problems that come with Linux. And although you might be an absolute Linux guru, you can bypass all of these controls and you can get around and you know do whatever you want. That's perfectly fine, but it's not going to help you when you're actually trying to do your job. They want control over what you're doing and that's perfectly fine because they have to have control. That's just how these things work. Now with the instance of having your own VM instance, usually they'll have that within a control environment as well. It's a machine that only you can access and they can reboot that machine into its latest settings that were working if something does go wrong. And things do often go wrong. It's not as free and it's not as like hacker spec as you might think. And that's exactly what they want. They want you to be controlled in this environment so that they know what you're doing and that you're actually doing it correctly and that if something goes wrong, they can back it up. I know you can create snapshots. I know there's a thousand excuses of why you should only use Linux at work. But trust me, in most cases, it's not going to happen. I'd love to know, what do you guys use at your work? I know from talking and working at various different places throughout my work history, Windows has been the main operating system at every single one of them. There was one place that used Macs exclusively, but you had to log into a remote desktop, which was a Windows server. Aside from this, as a freelancer, I've been able to use whatever operating system I want, but I still choose to use Windows because it works better for the systems that I'm administering and the systems that I need to make changes in. And for that purpose, Windows works perfectly for me and for every other person on a cybersecurity team that I've seen working at these organizations before. Let me know in the comments below what you use at work. I'd love to know. And if you have any other ideas, please do, again, put them in the comments below. Thanks for watching, everyone. I'll catch you on the next video. Peace out.